On today's episode of the Tackle Talk podcast, we break down the brand new 2021 products from Z-Man, we recap stage five of the Major League Fishing season at Sturgeon Bay, and we save you some serious money on the most popular braid on the market. All that and more on this episode of Tackle Talk. Hello everybody, I'm Bill Dance, and you're listening to Tackle Talk. Welcome to the Tackle Talk Podcast, sponsored by TopFishingDeals.com. Updated daily to provide you with savings on all your favorite gear. Now, here's your host, Andrew Hayes. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Tackle Talk Podcast. As always, we are brought to you guys exclusively by TopFishingDeals.com. If you guys are in the market for anything that you could need to go fishing, if you're looking for a new rod, new reels, new line, lures, apparel, kayaks, boots, waders, anything that you could need to go fishing, make sure you're checking Top Fishing Deals first. If not, you're probably overpaying for the stuff that you're buying. TopFishingDeals.com is a simple, easy-to-use website. You go there. I check it every single morning when I wake up to make sure anything I'm looking for, uh, if it's on sale, that I can jump on it while I'm you know, not having to pay full price. So make sure that you're checking it daily. They update it every single day with the best deals from all over the internet from your favorite retailers, whether it's Bass Pro, whether it's Cabela's, it's Academy, Discount Tackle, Shop Carl's, Tackle Warehouse, any of these places that you guys shop, they just compile all of the best sales and clearance items to make sure that you guys are never missing a good deal. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to give them your info. You don't have to buy anything through them. You literally just check topfishingdeals.com before you buy any fishing stuff to make sure that you're getting the best price. Otherwise, you guys are probably overpaying or you're spending too much time looking at different websites, going to stores, looking in bargain bins. You don't have to do that. That's what Top Fishing Deals is for. So make sure you're checking www.topfishingdeals.com before you buy any of your fishing gear to make sure you're getting the best price. Alrighty, so today we are going to start with a quick recap from Major League Fishing Stage 5 uh, at Sturgeon Bay. This is one of the you know next big events to come back. The cool part about Sturgeon Bay is that you're seeing all of these Major League Fishing guys, a lot of them are you know, southern guys, they're normally used to, you know, you're flipping heavy cover, you're horse and bass in with big bait casting setups. On Sturgeon Bay, this is a smallmouth event. So you're seeing these guys out in open water, you're seeing them in giant bays and coves, they're using their electronics, they're getting on fish, and they're using, you know, these tiny spinning rods when you're used to seeing these guys just using, you know, heavy 7-3 rods and flipping fish in the boat. They're using these spinning rods, these, you know, smallmouth are working them, they're working their drag. It's a really cool kind of dynamic to see these guys fish for something other than big largemouth. So Justin Lucas won this event. Congrats to Justin. He absolutely destroyed everybody in this event. Um, He hung up 141 pounds and 9 ounces on day 1. Day 2, he hung up 63 pounds and 13 ounces of smallmouth. Uh, That gave him a 2-day total of 205 pounds, 6 ounces for the qualifying round. That was good enough for first place. That bumps him directly to the championship round. In the qualifying rounds, when he did hang up that 205 pounds, he beat, I think, the next closest angler by like 30-plus pounds. Um, And then the championship round, he brought in 110 pounds and 5 ounces of smallmouth. He beat Mark Daniels Jr. by about 8 pounds, I think, for the title. So 300-plus pounds of fish in three days, especially considering their smallmouth for Justin Lucas. Absolutely insane. Congrats to Justin. Major League Fishing Stage 5 winner on Sturgeon Bay. Um, We also have the Bassmaster Elite Series coming back here pretty soon. This week, later this week, they're actually going to start their event on the St. Lawrence River. Really excited to see the Bassmaster Elite guys get back out there to be, you know, in the traditional five fish limit format and to see some big bags come in. So look for that next week. We will probably recap who won the St. Lawrence River event, but that starts later this week. All right, we're not going to waste any time here. We are going to get directly into the Z-Man 2021 product release. So they released quite a few items that they're coming out with next year. And when they say a 2021 release, a lot of these items are going to be available in the next couple weeks. Usually when they release them, they come out like mid-July, but they call this their 2021 product line. Um, But they came out with some stuff. You're going to see kind of a mixed reaction here. Um, Some of the stuff I think is really cool, interesting. I'll definitely give it a try. Some of the other stuff... It's okay. It's just not really, you know, like wow factor. It's not innovative, you know, at least by my standards. It's just kind of small tweaks, which we saw a little bit in the last episode with Strike King. 
Um, but there is some cool stuff in here that Z-Man came out with. So we're going to run through these. First off is the OG Mushroom Jig Head. Now, you know, Z-Man is kind of known for hopping on the Ned Rig bandwagon pretty heavily. And, you know, they came out with the TRDs. They came out with those little shroom heads. They're really kind of the premier company when you think of Ned Rig supplies. So this shouldn't really come as a shock to anybody. The mushroom jig head came out. Basically, it's just, it's not quite as cylindrical looking as the shrooms. Uh, it's a little bit more of a traditional mushroom head, smaller head, a little bit thicker of a hook, which I kind of like too. My big complaint about those shrooms is those hooks, if you you know, look at a log or look at a rock, it's bent out. If you, you know, flip a fish, you shouldn't have flipped, it bends out. If you get snagged, that hook is never the same. So these new mushroom heads that they came out with have a needlepoint VMC hook in them. Looks like they have a size four and a size two hook, depending on the weight of your jig head. But I'm hoping basically that that VMC hook is just a little better than the ones they use in their shrooms. If so, this might be a cool little upgrade instead of just buying the normal shroom heads. You can buy these OG mushroom jigs. They look around the same price. Z-Man says that they're going to be $4.99 for a four pack. That's pretty par for the course for nice jig heads at this point if you're looking for Ned Rig supplies. Otherwise, you can just use normal ball heads or whatever. Fish, I don't think, really care what kind of jig head you're throwing a Ned Rig on. But if you are going for, you know, traditional mushroom head style jigs, about a dollar a piece is what you're going to end up paying. So that is kind of par for the course here. Five dollars for a four pack. I do like that of all of these products, Z-Man does tell us the price of each one of them. So that'll help us kind of come to a decision of like, hey, is this worth giving it a try or is this just too expensive and out of my league and I don't really care so much. So they did give you kind of an updated mushroom jig. That's kind of nice. Uh, the next item is the Eye Strike Finesse Eyes. Uh, I'm not really going to spend a whole lot of time on this. We're going to pretty much skip over this one. It is literally just a little jig head. kind of looks like a swim jig head with eyes glued onto it. Nothing really exciting to see here. Just a different jig head that they're coming out with that I probably won't use. I mean, if you really want, you know, you're looking for a nice jig head to use for like small paddle tail swim baits or something, this might be cool, but nothing that I'm really excited in. So just another jig head that they're coming out with. Next is the Pro Bullets weedless jig head uh this one's intriguing only because i've seen one of my buddies absolutely murder smallmouth on the river system here with these pro bullets they're kind of interesting they basically have like an ewg hook and then on top of the ewg hook where if you were going to do a texas rig where that bullet weight would sit they kind of have that bullet weight already molded into the hook there's weight up there right by the eyelet then there's also additional weight at the belly of the hook. So think like a sort of a traditional swim bait hook. Um, so it kind of looks like if a swim bait hook with a belly weight and then a Texas rig kind of had a baby, that's these pro bullets. And the interesting part about this is obviously the pro bullets have been out for a while, but they're coming out with bigger models. So they're coming out with a three aught and a four aught size that puts you into you know, borderline really, really big smallmouth, almost too big for some of the smallmouth around here, and big largemouth territory. So this is kind of going above and beyond. This could be kind of a cool piece of terminal tackle if you throw a lot of beaver or creature style baits. Because uh, unlike a Texas rig, if you're throwing a Texas rig and all of the weight is at the front near the eyelet, you have a better chance of getting snagged in rocks, falling in crevices, getting caught on you know, logs and things like that, you just have a better chance of getting snagged up. That additional weight in the belly basically helps keep that bait horizontal with the bottom as opposed to being just so vertical like you think when you think of Texas rig of just going straight down, that weight hits the bottom and then the plastic kind of sticks up. This will help keep it a lot more horizontal uh, on the bottom of the water column. So that's kind of interesting. This one's a little bit pricey, $6.49 for a three pack. If they hold up well, it might be worth it. But uh, just kind of upsizing these, you know, different pro bullets that they've already shown that do really well and that a lot of people like, they're giving you bigger sizes that you guys could use for, you know, big largemouth, especially a four-odd hook. That is plenty big enough if you're going to be, you know, flipping around and cover or something for largemouth. So kind of interesting there, the Pro Bullet Z Weedless Jig Head. The next item that they come out with is the Cross Eyes Chatterbait. You knew Z-Man was probably going to find a way to update and continue to cash in on the Chatterbait somehow, and they definitely didn't disappoint here. They have two different updates to Chatterbaits uh, to kind of, again, keep things new, keep them exciting, obviously capitalize on the popularity, and everybody's throwing bladed jigs now. That's the hot new thing. It has been for a couple years at this point. You watch 
the tour guys, you watch any tournament, everybody's throwing a bladed jig, whether it's a chatterbait or a thunder cricket or whatever, everybody's throwing bladed jigs. So it makes sense that they would update these, give you something new in this category. This is the first of the two chatterbait models. It is the cross eyes chatterbait. I'll make this one really easy on you. Basically, they took the regular chatterbait and it sounds like they added two little weed guards to it. So this is a little bit more weedless. Um, they did a 5 odd O'Shaughnessy hook, uh, supposed to help them keep pinned a little better, just a different hook, a different style. They upgraded the trailer keeper, it now has two prongs, so you've got the molded lead piece, you know, the spike that kind of sticks out uh, of the shaft, and then you also have a wire keeper in there too, so just trying to keep that paddle tail or that crawl or whatever you have on the back of this chatterbait pinned a little bit better. The only thing I really don't like about this, and ironically it's its namesake, is these goofy-ass kind of cross-eye painted eyes that are right on the top of the jig head. They just look silly. It's not going to affect the fishing at all. It just looks kind of dumb. It looks really cartoony um, and kind of gimmicky, but it's where they got the name, the cross-eyes chatterbait, so they do have that kind of uh, interesting paint job on the head. But this is a cool little addition to the chatterbait lineup. A small upgrade to just about every part of the chatterbait, it sounds like, and this has a $9.99 price point. So kind of right in the middle of regular chatterbaits and jackhammers, somewhere in that sweet spot, right around that 10 buck mark. So next, we are going to get to one of the biggest splashes that they made, and that was an update to the jackhammer chatterbait. So the jackhammers have been so popular. Uh, the Bassmaster Classic, I think, was one on a red chatterbait, if I remember right, and then the price of red... Uh, jackhammer chatterbait skyrocketed to like 50 60 bucks online it's amazing how that happens that you know there's one hot bait somebody wins the biggest tournament in the country on it and now every weekend warrior needs to have this bait too but they did update the jackhammer chatterbait this one is called the jackhammer stealth blade obviously everybody knows that regular jackhammers are basically chatterbaits with very fancy hooks and trailer keepers and better blades and paint and skirt and head design. Basically, it is just a very, very fancy chatterbait, um, about as nice as they can make it, I think. But what they did with this one is, just like the name sounds, Stealth Blade, they made the blade clear. I kind of go both ways on this, because I'm not really sure how this is going to work out until you try it out, but I could obviously see this being really good for pressured water. It just doesn't have that big, bright flash that the either, you know, gold or silver or painted blade would have on a regular chatterbait. So I could see that kind of being a plus. This will basically take on the motion of, like, a really crazy swim jig, because that's really all the bass are going to see is the jig head and then your trailer. They're not going to see that blade at all, um, but it's still going to displace all the water, hopefully. So I can see that being a good thing. The only thing I'm really curious about is that all of the other chatterbaits have had metal blades. Every single chatterbait has either a silver, gold, or painted metal blade, and I think that kind of helps its action a lot. You have this really thin, um, kind of slanted hex metal blade that just flaps so hard in the water, and I think it's because it's so thin that helps a lot. This new stealth blade is going to have to be plastic or some sort of resin or something, obviously, because it's clear. So this is no longer metal. To my knowledge, this is the first chatterbait that has not had a metal blade. So I'm not sure how that affects the action. I don't know if it'll be a little harder to start up. I don't know if it will be lighter, if it'll want to kind of come up in the water column because you don't have the weight of that metal blade. I'm not really sure. So I'm kind of interested on this one. This will be something that, if I'm honest with you guys, I will probably pick up and try just because I'm so curious about it. And again, like I said, I fish a lot of pressured water. I could see this being a good thing if the action isn't hindered by not having a metal blade. So I'm interested in this one, the Stealth Blade Jackhammer Chatterbait. The only bad part about this is it's a jackhammer, so obviously it comes with a jackhammer price point. It is $16 or $15.99, something like that. Um, for this Stealth Blade Chatterbait. So I will probably only be buying one, and I'll try it out, and I will let you guys know how it goes, but I'm interested in this one. So this and the Pro Bullets are kind of the two things I'm excited about so far. I will probably try both of those. The next thing on Z-Man's list here is the Chatterbait Willow Vibe. This is where it starts to get really interesting. The next two things are maybe my favorite things on this whole list. Just because I'm so curious, I've never used anything, seen anything like these before. Basically what they're doing is they're stripping down these chatterbaits of all their skirt material, making them smaller, and they're giving us some cool, almost look like more of a terminal tackle device as opposed to an actual full-blown lure. So this Willow Vibe right here, if you wanna look it up, you can, but I'll try and explain it to you. Basically it looks like a small jig head 
an eye on either side. It's got a wire bait keeper, uh, a lot smaller hook than a normal chatterbait. And then instead of having that hex blade that it normally has, it's got kind of a willow leaf blade like you're used to seeing on like a spinner bait. It has that, and that's what's actually going to flap. And there is no skirt on this at all. So it is completely bare. It's just a jig head with a willow blade on top that's supposed to flap back and forth. And this one will be a little interesting just because I don't know how well that willow blade will actually kind of vibrate. I think the cool part about chatterbaits is that hex blade seems to make a big difference. A lot of times if you go to some of these companies and you get these generic chatterbaits that have more of like a rounded blade and not really that sharp hex blade, they just don't seem to kind of have the same motion. They don't seem to be as vigorous as water. You know, the water displacement just isn't the same. So I'm really interested. This is more of like a... I'm guessing more of like a finesse kind of tactic here. Um, this and the next one are two things that I could very easily see me using like in a creek or river situation for smallmouth. This looks a lot more smallmouth friendly than a regular chatterbait. And might go off on a little tangent here, but basically I love using chatterbaits for largemouth bass. I have the utmost confidence in them. One of my favorite lures of all time, but I have zero confidence in using chatterbaits for smallmouth. I know they catch smallmouth. I've seen people do it before. I completely understand that. I just don't have confidence in it. That is a big bait to have a smallmouth actually get the whole thing in its mouth and be able to hook that fish. Smallmouth are great, but the one bad thing about smallmouth, obviously, they have small mouths. We've talked about this before. So a lot of times, if you're going to throw a bigger bait for smallmouth, it has to have treble hooks because you have to let that fish kind of swipe at it and attack it, and you can hook that fish without it actually having to swallow or to get the whole thing in its mouth. That's kind of the key to catching smallmouth with big lures is you have to use trebles. They just have a small mouth. It's going to be a lot harder to get you know, a full 5 aught hook in its mouth with a blade, with a skirt, with a trailer. Just not realistic unless you're going after like, you know, 17, 18, 19 inch fish. But some of these smaller fish, just you're going to miss a lot of fish. It's not a, a smallmouth friendly bait, especially smaller fish. But this definitely looks like it could be. You could throw a little paddle tail on the back of this if it vibrates like it should. And this could be an absolute killer in a river situation, a creek situation, small water, small fish. Um, I could maybe even see this being a crappie bait, if I'm going to be honest. I don't know how big it is from looking at it. It says it has a 2 aught hook. That's kind of right in the middle of <laughs> big crappie and small bass. So I could see this going either way, but this is really intriguing. I will definitely pick these up and give them a try. The only bad part, again, about these is they are a little pricey. Two of these Willow Vibes are $5.99. And again, just a small kind of bare bones, no skirt, no anything, just a jig head with a willow blade attached to the top that is supposed to vibrate back and forth like a chatterbait. So that is the next item. I do like that one. And then we get to probably the one that I will pick up first out of all of these, and that is the eye strike chatterbait. Basically the exact same thing we just described there. It is a jig head with no skirt. It's got a trailer keeper on it. It's got a hook on it. And then it has the traditional chatterbait hex blade on the top of it so again this looks like a smaller version of a chatterbait with no skirt basically is what you're looking at here at a different head design and this one looks like it's probably a little bigger on this one they're talking about four aught and five aught hooks on this so then i guess this is probably a little big for smallmouth you could definitely still use it but it's getting into that territory where it's probably a lot more suited for largemouth bass but again just a stripped down chatterbait no skirt no frills no anything no weed guard no nothing just Put your own paddle tail on the back. Put your own soft plastic on the back. You don't, this is more of like a, <laughs> if you think of a regular chatterbait as like a jig, this is more of like the Texas rig version of a chatterbait, right? It's a lot more sleek, a lot more slender, not as much kind of flowy skirt material and things like that. It's not as bulky of a presentation. This is a lot more slender, a lot more aerodynamic, a lot more friendly for, you know, smaller fish or getting more bites. It's not as intimidating to fish. So the eye strike chatterbait comes in next on this list and it is a two pack for $8.99. So it's almost twice the price of that willow blade. Obviously it's a lot bigger, probably a lot more material in there. That makes a lot of sense. So if I'm looking back at these, that willow vibe looks like that'll probably be a pretty cool smallmouth bait for you for the river. And then this eye strike chatterbait just looks like a, if there was such thing as a finesse chatterbait, pretty much. I think that's what this is. All right, next is the Bullseye Spinnerbait by Z-Man. And again, we're following a pretty heavy pattern here of stripping down things that Z-Man already makes. Z-Man already makes regular spinnerbaits. Um, they're actually not bad too. I've used them before. But this is a very stripped down spinnerbait. This looks like a 
very, very fancy beetle spin. If you've ever seen a beetle spin, basically a really small jig head with one single blade on top. You can get them at Walmart for like 98 cents. They are one of the first lures a lot of people use when they're kids or when they're first getting into fishing, just because they're so easy to use. They're so cheap, very user-friendly. This looks like a very fancy one of those. So it's got a big Colorado blade on it. Uh, depending on what size you get, they have size 4 and 4.5 gold-plated Colorado blades. It has a pretty nice-looking uh, wire shaft. Uh, and then it basically has this eye strike jig head that comes with it, but that is detachable. So you can put any sort of jig head, any sort of hook on this that you want, but it does come with a kind of a single eye jig head, at least to start, but very stripped down spinner bait. Looks like you can kind of do what you want with it. Very bare bones, stripped down looking, uh, spinner bait here. And this looks like it's going to MSRP for $4.99 which is kind of expensive for a not spinnerbait spinnerbait, right? They took out some of the skirt material, took out a lot of the stuff that, you know, it costs to make a spinnerbait, and they're still charging you a regular spinnerbait price. Um, so again, this is a very fancy beetle spin is what it looks like, but something that's intriguing if you're into kind of customizing your spinnerbaits and um, using certain hooks and certain skirt material or whatever, you want to customize it, then this might be a cool thing for you. Next, the swim bait eye jig heads. Again, just a really small kind of normal looking jig head. It almost looks like it'd be a jig head for like crappie or something, except it says it has a 3 aught or a 5 aught VMC hook in it. So obviously not for crappie. This is a fairly large jig head. It's going to be more for like, you know, three, four inch paddle tail swim baits probably. Um, looks like a three pack of these is $5.99 for 5 aught or $4.99 for a 3 aught 3 pack. So again, nothing super exciting there. It is literally just a, a jig head with eyes on it. Next, we have the Nedlocks EWG. Again, just kind of another play on their Ned rigs here. Um, they, they've already had, I think, EWG Ned rig hooks. I'm not really sure what's new about this, unless it is kind of the molded bait keeper that they have at the top of this EWG. It's really the only thing I can see on here that looks like it would probably be different. It's just an EWG net head, and it looks like these are four packs for $6.99. Um, all right, now we're going to get into the soft plastics that they came out with. There's one of these I really like, and then there's a couple of these that I could do without, and I just, you know, don't really care about them. The first falls in that kind of don't really care category. It is a six-inch door matadors i don't know it's really annoying too all of these end with like a capital z i get it it's kind of z-man's thing but it gets really annoying when you're trying to remember the names of these and say them so it's a six inch door matador z i think they're playing on like a doormat matador scheme there i don't know this is a weird name basically what this is it's a six inch curly tail all this is there is nothing interesting nothing new or different about this it is just a giant curly tail grub made with their normal kind of Elaztec uh, plastic that's super stretchy and really cool if you have light wire hooks. Not so cool if you're using normal hooks. Very hard to kind of work with a lot of times, but it's super durable, floats really well. If you do get this rigged up right, it will last you fish after fish after fish. So they have a six-inch curly tail if you're into that sort of thing. Next, they have a six-inch darters. Uh, this looks like it might be a little bit more saltwater uh, oriented here. It looks like it's probably supposed to be just a paddle, not even a paddle tail swim bait. It's like a split tail swim bait. It's got some joints in it. Um, but again, just a plastic swim bait, pretty much six inches. Um, again, and it looks like this is probably for more of you saltwater guys. This is definitely a snook bait. It looks like to me, some brackish water. If you're, you know, around the coast or something, and this might be cool up here in Ohio, not really my thing, but, uh, yeah, they have a six inch little swim bait that they're coming out with. One of the next ones, this is something that caught my eye right off the bat when I saw this list. This is a soft plastic called the GOAT, G-O-A-T, the GOAT series baits. And what this kind of looks like, if you've ever seen a Strike King Rage Menace, just a kind of a grub body, and then it has two flapping kind of appendages at the very bottom, that's exactly what this looks like. It looks probably like a a more floaty, a more durable, a more stretchy Strike King Rage Menace. But it comes in a couple different sizes. It comes in a 3-inch, a 3.75, and a 4.25. Um, the 3-inch is called the Baby Goat. The 3.75 is called the Regular Goat. And then the 4.25 is the Billy Goat. So you can throw these probably on the back of a swim jig. You can throw these on a chatterbait, a buzzbait, it says. So 
who knows, maybe these float well enough, you could use them almost like a buzz toad right on top of the water. Uh, not really sure, but I'm sure those appendages flap pretty well. Uh, again, just looks like a grub with some really interesting sort of legs on the back that are going to kick pretty hard, it looks like from the picture. Um, so again, these look like pretty versatile. Uh, I will probably try these, if I'm going to be honest. I might try these on a Ned Rig. I might try them on just a really small EWG and pitch them in the rivers. Uh, but it looks like this is a $4.99 price point for the packs of all sizes and it looks like the packs are uh three baits at each pack it looks like so 4.99 for three of these goat series soft plastics uh next if you guys have ever seen the z-man sort of small trd craws that they came out with a couple years ago that everybody really likes um they basically made a big version of that these are called the pro craws they are three and a half inches long, so these are going to be normal kind of Texas rigging, uh, regular size craws. You could definitely bite them down, put them on the back of a jig. You could put these on, you know, a, a, just a normal big jig head. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with this, but it's basically just a soft plastic craw that they've already used in the smaller Ned Rig size. They made it in a bigger size, three and a half inches. They are four forty nine for a three pack, and then finally we have the six inch long shots. This is a drop shot bait. The interesting part about this bait is it's a like a six inch, really long, skinny worm, like a straight tail worm looking thing with a really small diamond sort of appendage right at the end of the tail. But if you know anything about Z-Man soft plastics, they tend to float a lot. Like they want to go straight up most of the time. That's not necessarily what you probably want on drop shot bait. You don't want your drop shot bait and then this worm kind of sticking straight up. So it sounds like what they did, they put about 15% salt in this. It says to kind of neutralize some of that buoyancy. So it'll give it a little bit more of like a, a fluid action, a little bit more of like a suspending action where you'll get this kind of S waver uh, action probably and it won't want to stick straight up because that is one of the things you probably want to avoid. If you're going to throw a drop shot bait, you don't want it to be super floating. You want it to kind of stay right there horizontal. Um, so kind of a cool idea with them. They knew that their baits floated uh, pretty darn well, so they made sure that this one doesn't float as much, so it gives it more action on a drop shot. So uh, other than that, the only other two things that it looks like Z-Man came out with is a kind of bait bag, just a normal bag. Looks like it's sized for their normal soft plastic packages, so you can fit probably 50 packages of baits in there if you really want. Um, so if you're looking for a tackle bag, they came out with one of those, and then they have a Ned Rig kit. Basically just some of their shroom heads, some of their TRDs, some of their uh, TRD craws, some of their ticklers, all that kind of stuff. They basically have a Ned Rig kit already made, pre-packaged that they're selling. Uh, it looks like that's going for 20 bucks, and then the uh, bait bag is $59. Good lord. That is an expensive bait bag. But if you really like Z-Man, there you go. So that is the new products that are coming out from Z-Man. Just to recap, we have the OG Mushroom Jig, just a really small uh, mushroom jig head. We had the Finesse Eyes, just a little swim bait hook. We have the Pro Bullet Z in the 3 aught and the 4 aught size. We have a Cross Eye Chatterbait, just a little weedless chatterbait with a little bit of upgraded hardware. We have the Jackhammer Stealth Blade, a clear-bladed Jackhammer Chatterbait. We have the Willow Vibe, which is a stripped-down Chatterbait with a Willow Blade instead of a regular Hex Blade. Then we have the Eye Strike Chatterbait, which is the stripped-down Chatterbait with a traditional Hex Blade. We have the Bull's Eye Spinnerbait, which is a stripped-down Spinnerbait that has a Colorado Blade, no skirt, and a detachable jig head. We have the Swimbait Eye Jig Heads, just another little Swimbait head. We have the Nedlocks EWG hook. We have that Door Matador 6-inch curly tail. We have the 6-inch darters that look like they're probably more of a snook uh, swim bait. We have the Goat Series soft plastics, which look like that little Rage Menace grub. Then we have the Pro Craws, the 3.5-inch soft plastic craw that came up from the TRD size. And then we have the 6-inch long shots drop shot bait. And then at the very end, we have that tackle bag, and we have the Ned Rig kit. So Z-Man came with quite a bit here. You probably had to expect a lot of this coming from the company that has made their name on the Chatterbait and the Ned Rig. You knew that a lot of this stuff was going to revolve around that, but I think they did a fairly good job of coming out with something different. They have a, a clear blade on a, on a jackhammer. They have some different stripped-down Chatterbaits. They have some different soft plastics, um, the EWG, the Pro Bullets hook. So all in all for Z-Man, I think they did a fairly good job here. I will definitely use probably three or four of these things uh, within the coming year. So good job from Z-Man, all things considered a fairly good uh, 2021 product lineup. All right, 
And finally, as always, we're going to save you some money on some gear. This time, I'm going to save you some money on one of the most popular braided lines out there on the market, which makes sense. What's one of the things you use braided line for most frequently? Frog fishing, and it is frog fishing season. It's summertime. There's pads, there's moss, there's cover everywhere. Topwater bite is on, especially in the morning and the afternoon. So you're probably tossing around a frog. And the three things that you need for frog fishing are obviously a heavy rod, a fast reel, and heavy braid. Well, we've got you covered with a heavy braid this week. I personally use Power Pro just because it's always around. It's easy to get. It's at Walmart. It's at all of your normal tackle stores. It's usually relatively cost effective. Uh, and right now on topfishingdeals.com, if you search Power Pro, P-O-W-E-R-P-R-O, all one word, you will see a sale that will take you to the Bass Pro website where all Power Pro line is between 13 and 25% off depending on the size line that you want. So specifically for frogs, if we're talking about, you know, saving you some money on some frog line here, I always use 65 pound braid. Bad part about a braid that heavy is it does get pricey, but you need that heavy braid if you're going to be fishing a frog. You don't want to throw 30, 40 pound braid. You want to throw somewhere between 50 and 65, and I always go 65. But right now on topfishingdeals.com, you can get a 300 yard spool of Power Pro, which will easily rig up like two or three reels, especially if you use a little bit of mono backing. That's normally a $35 spool for that 300 yards of 65 pound Power Pro, but instead of $35 right now, it's only $26.99. So that's 22% off as a darn good deal on some heavy braid for frog rods. Or, you know, maybe you need lighter line. Maybe you need something for one of your spinning setups, or you need, you know, some 30 or 40 pound braid for one of your jig rods or something. All Power Pro is on sale right now. So if you go to www.topfishingdeals.com and search Power Pro, all one word, you will see the deal that will take you to Bass Pro and save you some money on some Power Pro line. Alrighty, that is our episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. If you want to leave us a review, that would help a ton. Or if you want to go over to Instagram and give us a follow, we're at Tackle Talk Podcast on Instagram. Or if you want to follow my personal page, it's at Hayes Fishing, H-A-Z-E Fishing. And again, thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of Tackle Talk. Thank you for listening to the Tackle Talk Podcast. Tackle Talk is produced by Andrew Hayes. Copyright 2020. Please subscribe to Tackle Talk on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 